we've seen a move by some of the people who would love to talk about racial purity, whatever that is. Um, when you find when you can define it, let me know. I'll be waiting. Uh, answer the postcard to me. We see the move by some of these type of people to present states like India and Israel as examples of ethno-religious states. Now, on the one hand, you could argue there's some truth in that, given the particular focus, uh, for obvious reasons, in Israeli history on J Judaism and how it's a central part of the state's identity. And with India, you could argue that the BJP and Modi present a particular view of India. However, at ground level, the reality is very, very different. And now I'm not with India. I know enough about it to be well aware that it has thousands of ethnicities, literally, that intersect in complicated and paradoxical ways. And Roger Kipling, who is often a, f a big hero, these kind of guys trying to present India as a strong ethno-religious state, was well aware of it. And his books often show the contradictions and awkward clashes and sometimes how they, these cultures overlap. Something his father concentrated upon as well, although his father is sadly forgotten and is in some respects a more interesting figure than his son. But I do more know a reasonable about Israel and the ethnicities there and far more about that, in fact. And I'm going to demolish in about three seconds the notion that Israel has no ethnic diversity. Uh, it's absolutely a ridiculous argument. Let me share first this back, this information. Let me get rid of that and agree to the cookies. 3,000 interviews later, a Canadian Israeli's view on the conflict. Corey Jill Shuster, creator of video series Ask the Ask Project, traverses Israel and the West Bank, seeking truth from the region's everyday citizens. Now, in a moment, I'm going to share some of Corey's videos where he's asking people. And this is a one of a set of 49 videos doing 49 ethnicities. Not diverse. You must be having a fucking bubble if you really think that and you're trying to use it as some sort of model to show why we need to have no diversity in British society. I often hear it about my wife's homeland as well, where she's one side from Ukraine, one from Russia. You'll hear about the Russian side that they're not diverse. It just shows a lack of knowledge about the area. But here we are. This is who are the Circassians of Israel first. <laughs> אז מתי באו? באתם? הצ'רקסים יצאו מהקווקז וגורשו מ-1864, ושני המקישים בארץ ישראל הגיעו בשנת 1878, והקימו שני כפרים, כפר קמא ו... Let's go through a few others. The Bukharam from Azbakistan. And that Osh Paluf is I read it's it's a variation on pilaf, which is a dish that people may be familiar with. Look at the number of ethnicities going down there. Druze, Afghanistan. Oh, Indians. Uh, Hungarians, Bulgarians, Ethiopians, of whom there are quite a lot in, in Israel. Turks, Germans. Any claim that Israel is not ethnically diverse is ludicrous. And anyone who spends five minutes willing to learn about Israel will find that it, how, just how ludicrous it is. Israel is not some stereotypical state where it's just full of Orthodox Jewish guys wandering about or anything. It's a complicated state with cultures that sometimes contradict with each other, clash with each other, even within Judaism. <sighs> Trying to use it as some model to or a paradigm. For, so the far right here in Britain can start using it as something to look to is bizarre. Because on one hand, half the people involved with that, the far right here, would look to it in a kind of contemptuous and envious way. They'd be looking at it on one hand 
with great contempt and talking about yids and all sorts of silly nonsense. And on the one hand, they'd be talking about how they stand up for themselves. The reality is, as ever, a great deal more complicated. And Israel is not just the situation in Gaza versus Israel. There's far more to the country than that. Let's read down some of them down the side there. Morocco, Algeria, Yemen. I think that's enough to make the point. I don't even have to do India to show that any attempt to use these countries as simplistic paradigms to build like nations based on a, a blood purity ideal is ludicrous. 